tuning in to Brot House Sports. I am your host, Emily Cheddar Dog Dillion. I'll admit that I was surprised by this game, and I'm glad that I was wrong about my prediction for it. The game does, however, start a little shaky. 49ers are second and two, and Christian McCaffrey makes a 27-yard run. Later in this drive, Big Cock Brock Purdy makes a pass to McCaffrey for a 13-yard touchdown pass. Browns are second and four. P.J. Walker makes a pass intended to David Bell, but is intercepted by Fred Warner. Niners at first and ten. McCaffrey gets crushed for a loss of eight yards by Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa. Jake Moody attempts a 54-yard field goal, but it is no good. Marquise Goodwin receives the ball and runs it for 20 yards, though Browns don't score afterward. Browns trail the first quarter, 0-7. Second quarter begins, and Ray Ray McLeod makes a 15-yard run to the left to get a first down. Brock Purdy makes a short pass to Brandon Ayuk for a gain of 33 yards. These two big plays eventually set up a simple 25-yard field goal made by Jake Moody. P.J. Walker makes a deep pass to Amari Cooper, who was wide open with two Niners in zone for a gain of 58 yards. Browns now first and 10, Kareem Hunt makes a gain of 7 yards. Third and one, with the snap going to Harrison Bryant, who gives it to Kareem Hunt, who brings it in for 16 yards for a touchdown. Browns trail the half, 7 to 10. The fun begins. Third quarter is where the Browns turn on the Jets. And no, we're not talking about New York. Third and seven, PJ Walker in the shotgun makes a pass to Amari Cooper for a gain of 26 yards while in man coverage. Walker makes a pass to David Njoku for a gain of 10 yards for a first down. Eventually, Dustin Hopkins comes in to make a 42-yard field goal. The kick is good. Niners are at 3rd and 10. Brock Purdy attempts a pass to Ayuk, but is intercepted by Martin Emerson. Time passes, and at 1st and 10, Walker makes a pass to Njoku for 8 yards. Now 3rd and 3, Walker makes an incomplete pass to Harrison Bryant. But that's okay, though, as Hopkins makes a 46-yard field goal to claim the lead. Browns take the third quarter, 13 to 10. A little into the fourth now, PJ Walker attempts to pass to Amari Cooper, but is intercepted Ooh. by Diamador Lenoir, who takes it to Cleveland's eight. Jordan Mason makes an eight yard run for a 49ers touchdown. Browns get the ball back, and at second and five, Jerome Ford runs left for a gain of 13 yards. Second and 10, Walker makes a pass to Cooper for 13 yards. After a Walker sack by Nick Bosa, Dustin Hopkins makes a 50 yard field goal. After a punt from San Fran, Browns are 3rd and 10. Walker makes an incomplete pass to Elijah Moore, but refs call unnecessary roughness on to Sean Gibson. Jerome Ford makes a run to his left for a gain of 14 yards. Ford again makes a run, but this time for a gain of 22 yards. This sets up a simple 29-yard field goal by Dustin Hopkins. The kick is good. Might I also add that after a decent drive by the 49ers, that Moody missed a 41-yard field goal? This was important because this was part of why San Francisco choked. Jim Schwartz's defense shown up and the Browns upset the 49ers 19-17. Before the game began, a fight broke out between players of the 49ers and Browns. Two notable players that were noticed in the skirmish were Devo Samuel of the Niners and Browns defensive back Juan Thornhill. Trent Williams of the Niners also instigated a fight with Elijah Moore, knocking Moore's helmet off. It's been said that the 49ers were getting in the way of the Browns' warm-up drills near midfield. Taunting was also going on between both teams, which escalated into the brawl. Head coach Kevin Stefanski condemned the fight by saying, We don't want that. That's not something that we're looking to do. Try to get in the middle of it. Get the guys out of there. But it's football. Emotions run high. According to a leaked source, the Browns are hopeful that Deshaun Watson will be ready to face the Indianapolis Colts on Sunday. That is according to Mary Kay Cabot of Cleveland.com. Watson has been out for two games due to a bruised rotator cuff and has been reviewed day-to-day -day while rehabilitating. Though the Browns made an upset win against the 49ers with P.J. Walker, the preference is that the team wants Watson back in the starting lineup and to have sustainability. After winning what was once an undefeated 49ers, the Browns look to be contenders winning the AFC North and making a playoff run. This sounds dandy, but in order to do this, they need Deshaun Watson back on the field to make that progress. David Njoku had something in mind when he shared the photos of his face burns when he suffered the fire pit accident almost three weeks ago. The reason Njoku did this was to show support for burn victims by sharing his pictures. He also partnered with the American Burn Association with the sale of t-shirts with him wearing that awesome mask from week four with proceeds going to the organization. When interviewed by Cleveland.com, Njoku says, 
I've been getting a lot of messages from uh, other burn victims and nurses that have burn victims, and they were telling me how everybody feels embarrassed to show whatever. So I wanted to just come out forth and show myself so everyone feels a little bit better about themselves. Wide receiver Amari Cooper says, There are a lot of players who definitely would not have played with that happening to them less than 48 hours before the game, and for good reason. But I was actually surprised when he played as well. But it says a lot about his toughness. The injuries keep piling up. On Tuesday, guard Michael oh, Dunn no. was placed There's on man, injured man. reserve. Earlier, Coach Stefanski gave an update that Dunn was dealing with a calf injury after stepping in for Joel Batonio in Week 6. Stefanski also noted that Dunn had no will to come out of the game despite the injury, stating, He was unbelievable. I mean, the way he fought through his injury, he wouldn't come out of the game, and you can see it on tape, that he was fighting just in the run game and in the pass game. There's still uncertainty as to how severe the calf injury is, but it is expected that Michael Dunn will miss at least four games on IR. Stefanski also noted that Batonio could return from his injury. The Browns came into their game against the 49ers at a disadvantage. Deshaun Watson and Joel Batonio were out with injuries, and Nick Schott is out for the season. But they upset San Francisco. Double entendre intended. Former NFL linebacker and Fox Sports 1 analyst Emmanuel Acho excused the results of this game by rationalizing that the 49ers went the majority of the game without Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel. He's technically not wrong to bring this up, but their disadvantage wasn't as significant as the Browns have missed even more players, yet managed to triumph. What has been noted is that Jim Schwartz's defense shown their potential and that they made Brock Purdy look like a final draft round pick. And before we go, we're going to talk about something I normally don't discuss because I don't like the idea of sports betting. But the Cleveland Browns are opening up as favorites against the Indianapolis Colts according to DraftKings. The Browns are negative 3 in the spread against the Colts plus 3. The money line is negative 155 for the Browns versus plus 130 for the Colts. This appears to be the case with Colts rookie quarterback Anthony Richardson being out with a season-ending shoulder injury, though Gardner Minshew, aka Uncle Rico, is showing bright spots on the Colts offense. Jonathan Taylor is back with the Colts, but is still adjusting to the current team situation. Colts starting defensive tackle Grover Stewart is out for six games for violating the league's policy on performance-enhancing substances. Again, I discourage betting, but the over-under for this game is at 39.5. Odds and lines are subject to change the closer we get to game day. And thank you again for watching Brot House Sports. Once again, I'm your host, Emily Cheddardog Dillion. Please like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell as I greatly appreciate it. It's also how you can find more of my videos and help me get through the algorithms as well. Once again, I'm your host, Emily Cheddardog Dillion, and I will see you next time.